Hello guys, let's do another Le Mans video. Same procedures every year, pretty much. Uh, I'm a test drive. And... I'm just gonna go around the track here. Uh, let's just put this off here. And go over the corners a bit in detail. Um, for the first one, I like to come around and get off the gas. Just when I hit the curb on the inside on the right. And then you want to start braking in a straight line and you want to come up until the right part here of the track. And what you will see curb as well to uh, get a nice and clean entry into the first corner or the first part of the chicane. And what you want to do is really cut the curb here. You can pretty much take all of this curb. then aim for a nice exit this corner take a lot of curb as well uh, you rarely get a slow line there but uh, what you have to watch out for is understeer out of this corner and uh, then getting too far to the left here that'll earn you a slow down way easier next part is uh, pretty straightforward of course uh, everyone knows this and you want to watch out for these bullets here on the right and when they end you want to break down to third gear and just try to hit that curb not too much else it will unset the, unsettle the car and the same goes for this one on the right you can short shift to fourth gear here actually and that'll help with stability you might want to have to do some counter steering on the top of the hill and then for Tete Rouge, uh, corner very guys struggle, uh, well, a lot of guys struggle in. This is, like a reverse here, this is a white line on the left side. There it is. And you want to kind of aim for that, but not break at that line. Just, you want to watch out for when that is disappearing. And just a bit after that, you want to start breaking. To about I'm not sure how much that is in, in miles per hour but about 120 and then just let the car roll into the corner you can cut a lot of the track here actually on the inside line and I think they changes on the outside as well you can actually come over here just over the curb oh see that was a slowdown already so you can leave the curve uh, for just a bit they changed that it seems like but not too much uh, play on, on the left there. Let's get a penalty. Let's go on the straight. Uh, actually, <laughs> I'm just at the perfect amount of the boost as well. You want to be at around 16% on the straight here. 15 to 16%. That's what you want to be at when you uh, exit Petit Rouge and boost up. Don't really care about the speed too much, uh, just try to hit those 15-16%. They come up onto the first Mozan chicane. Hit that brake very nicely when that orange part on the uh, railway, on the radio guard, sorry, comes in. And then you want to press the curb here. And when you leave that curb, or attack that curb, you want to try and be in a straight line, just like I am now. Because else the car might unsettle and you just turn around uh, to the right here. You definitely want to avoid that. And then there's a few lines that you can take here actually. Uh, you can take a lot of the curb on the inside or you can come a bit uh, wider to the right and take a nicer exit. I think everything works pretty much equal. Um, and what you want to do is come all the way over to the right here so you can get on the throttle very early and really use all of that apart here on the right You're just on the edge and you want to boost all the way through here um, just as when you're coming out of Tete Rouge and you want to be at maybe boost again uh, you want to be at around 30 35% somewhere between Like most of the time, I am at 
um, 33, 32, somewhere around that. It's always kind of dependent on how you're in traffic and everything. Well, that can definitely change. It's somewhere between 30 and 35, this should be fine. See the 100 marker board here? Uh, I think in the night you can actually break at that. Um, in daytime, I want to break shortly before that. Uh, try to break in a straight line as much as possible. And I really like this curb here on the inside. Not as much as uh, in the other chicanes, so I just like to touch the curb with the right side but not go over it. Not as much as uh, in the other one. And same goes for here for the right turn in the chicane. Try to use as much as the of the curb on the inside. And once again go and press the throttle nice and early. And on this one, I'm just not gonna boost here. On this one, you want to be around 53, oh sorry, uh, 43 to 45 percent of you uh, of boost used. Most of the time, this should be equal with uh, battery usage and use per lap. So it should be both at like 45 percent. That's a good indicator that you're. Uh, not using too much battery. And if that's not the case, maybe you want to be boosting a little bit less. Um, so you have a very nice and equal spread over every lap of uh, boost usage. Next up is Muzan Corner. As always, <laughs> this uh, pile is pretty much missing all the time. But if you can, and if, if you're in a very straight line, you can wait all the way up until here to start braking. And then really try to get on that threshold of uh, braking pressure. And try to brake in a straight line as much as possible. And try to aim for that island here on the, on the left. And when you hit that, you want to be coming in to the corner. And be very slowly, like under 60 miles per hour, definitely, uh, or under, under 100 kilometers per hour. And use all the curve on the inside here. As long as you don't touch these bollards on the right, you can get a slowdown. And then that'll net you a very nice exit out of that corner. Now this straight is kind of tricky, <laughs> actually. Um, you want to be around 65% of a boost used. Uh, in that lap and you can actually cut it out a bit earlier here that's the that's the big point so here's pretty much where you can uh, just use a bit less of boost you want to save something um, like out to 60% or somewhere around that it won't cost you too much because the car will accelerate anyway and you will have pretty much the same top speed you just hit it earlier with the boost And in the LMP1, you don't want to cut these curbs on the on the right side, in these little corners. They'll unsettle the car, and maybe they'll do, even do floor damage to the car. Definitely want, don't want to add that. So, uh, come to the entry of Indianapolis, and see that um, green patch here on the left? What I do is pretty much wait until you hit that end of the uh, green patch then brake just a little bit and a downshift once into a six gear they come very nicely here on the uh, right side don't take too much of the curb uh, the land side of the car and you could do two things actually uh, what i would do most of the time is breaking throughout all of the corner just uh, applying different types of brake pressure just staying lightly on the brake through the corner and then once the car is straight uh, brake as f much as you can or you can uh, lift the brakes like mid corner and then again brake in a straight line here as long as you brake in a straight line it should be um, pretty much okay no matter if you're on the right side or on the left and uh, overtaking the car what you want to do definitely is uh, try to get a really smooth line through here. 
stay on the inside and that'll carry the car around, uh, rotate it and then you can get on the throttle early again. No boosting between these two parts, I think uh, some of the tunes boost a bit here, but I don't do it manually, so there's that. And Anarch, of course, pretty tri uh, tricky. Kinda see that uh, 50 board on the on the left side. Um, actually, wait, you can see it because on, on my screen. Reverse a bit here. So you see the 50 board and you see the white line that's gonna come into display in any second here. There it is. So there's no real brake marker and it's really tricky at night. But what you want to do is brake somewhere in between that. I don't even know, it's just uh, like a feel kind of thing. What I kind of go for is... Um, probably I think it's just uh, in, uh, subconscious. But on the rail guard on the left side, there's a part where it's a bit lighter and darker. You know what I mean? Like it's just on the uh, edge now, on the screen. Right there, if you look between the or on the onto the left of the windshield, that's where I kind of want to aim for. Uh, we're gonna stop breaking. But if you've passed the 50 board, that's too late, definitely. <laughs> you want to break uh, in a straight line once again, and then turn into the corner pretty late. They have a nice and late apex. They can get onto the gas uh, very early once again. And you can release the throttle to uh, rotate the car around that corner. <laughs> definitely of good use there. Um, on this part of the track, I'm mostly about 80% uh, boost. 80 or just under. Um, but depending on traffic, you can definitely be over 80. Should be aiming for um, 82, 83 at a maximum here. So if you've used a bit more boost, uh, boost this lap, then definitely stop at 82 or something. Else that might upset other laps. Okay, next up we have the entry to the Porsche Curse, and once again it's the green patch where I'm starting to brake. And you want to wait quite a, a long time to turn into the right here. As the cars of course have a massive downforce. And then you really want to hit the curb here on the inside line. And you want to try to stay as much on the right or middle of the track as you can. You don't want to... Uh, come out way too wide on the left side because then that'll mess up this corner where the car either gets unstable and you have a bit of uh, oversteer which is not too bad actually or you have understeer and understeer means you might crash into that wall and to the right which is kind of fatal in these cars you definitely want to avoid that at all costs yeah um, you probably stay full throttle through all, all of that and then break down, uh, shift down into fourth gear as well. Around 125, I think, miles per hour it is, or 200 kilometers per hour. And you want to try to hug that inside line, but not just the grass, of course, on the right. And then give a little tap of the brakes to rotate the car a bit more easily. And try to hit the curb on the inside line. That'll really help to rotate the car around. Might have to do some counter steering here. Because uh, the car actually wants to oversteer. So that's much better than just understeering out of that corner. I think everyone who did Le Mans before knows what I mean. This chicane is pretty much uh, straightforward. Not much to say there. And then we come up onto the last part of the track, which is the four chicanes. And just seeing it, uh, just use parts here of the pit lane for the entry. And then try to aim for the... Well, I don't even know if it's a, if it's a bollard or something. But definitely try to hit a lot of that curb and try to stay in a straight line here between the two curbs. That'll give you maximum momentum. You can go through here quite fast. Uh, it's definitely scary and you have to practice it or else you'll unsettle the car pretty easily. 
Uh, but you can even uh, stabilize the car with a bit of throttle input there. Uh, just a bit. Be able to accelerate, just hold the uh, the speed there. And that can actually accelerate a bit here again. Uh, should be in second gear by now. And I'll like to come into first for a bit. And then a short shift into second. But you could stay in second gear as well, that doesn't really make a, a huge difference. So yeah, and I don't know, I kind of had this differently every corner. This chicane, because in the LMP cars, it really is rather meh. <laughs> uh, you just don't want to ride the sausage here. That's definitely something you don't want to do. So I'm going to try and uh, get a lap together, I hope that I won't make any mistakes. So it's probably going to be cold. Yeah, let's get to it. Thank you. 